I heard the request, okay? Yes, we'll go over the Wii U brochure. The Wii U required a lot of explanation for obvious reasons, so they needed to uh, create a uh, brochure. I mean, Nintendo does this for pretty much everything that they do. You know, ma major, you know, new consoles. They'll put out a brochure or uh, a guide uh, that's kind of like a freebie in stores. Um, they did this a lot in the Wii U era, they did this in the Switch era, they did this in the Wii era, you know, GameCube, N64, um, dates all the way back to the NES, there's like brochures for the NES and whatnot. Um, and this was released, um, this particular brochure, I believe, is around March. It came out around the spring of 2013, which, uh, that was... A pretty dead time to be a Wii U owner. There really wasn't a lot coming out. Um, it, it was definitely a situation where I think the Wii U had a pretty good launch, all things considered. Um, you know, on the Nintendo side of things, you had Mario U and Nintendo Land. And I don't really like Mario U anymore. Uh, when I first played it, I was like, this is a good game. Um, and now I just, I, I just don't really like playing it. I'd rather play pretty much any other new Super Mario Brothers game, uh, you know, each of them have kind of like distinct things that make them distinct. Uh, and Mario U just kind of felt like it was, it, it was, it just had no real direction. It just kind of felt like they wanted to do what new Super Mario Brothers we did again, but they decided to just add things that were kind of like, oh, well, you added Yoshi in the last one, well, let's add baby Yoshis. Oh, you added four-player multiplayer, let's add five-player multiplayer. And, and, you know, they shoehorned in gamepad support with, uh, you know, like you tap on the screen to add blocks. But, um, it's, it's, it was a fine game, you know, it's a launch game, it gave you a Mario game to play at launch, it gave you something to kind of just, like, whittle away at completion, uh, completing, uh, Nintendo Land is really good, it's, it's a really fun little party game, and, uh, you know, there was actual stuff to do in it, it, you know, Wii Sports is great, but, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's just kind of replaying for the sake of replaying, you know, kind of getting better at the game, uh, yourself, try to, try to hone in your skills. Nintendo Land gave you more incentive to replay in the game itself, you know, they had, uh, lots of different modes in each game, and, you know, there were little achievements and things to unlock and whatnot, um, and then the third party support, um, it wasn't that bad at launch. The problem was they were mostly old games like Mass Effect 3 and Batman Arkham City, but, uh, you know, I mean, it was still stuff to play. And then afterwards, there was nothing. Uh, there was basically nothing until March. That was when Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and LEGO City Undercover came out. And then there was nothing for a couple more months until, like, Game & Wario. Uh, there was stuff like, I, I think, Injustice, Gods Among Us, and, uh... The Walking Dead Survival Instinct, how could I forget? But uh, let's see exactly what was going on this year, or at least at this time period, uh, in the form of paper. Uh, so we can see this is a uh, Wii U Gamepad Deluxe set, and uh, you're playing some new Super Mario Brothers U. Uh, your guide to the revolutionary new home console from Nintendo. You see, okay, so uh, we're, we're gonna kind of go through a little bit of like 101 as to uh, what Nintendo messed up here. Uh, you know, launching with New Super Mario Brothers U, like, in con- uh, the concept of it wasn't a horrible idea, you know, New Super Mario Brothers was insanely popular. Uh, you know, the DS one and the Wii one did crazy in terms of sales numbers. Uh, 3DS one still did pretty good. I knocked a little piece of string on there. Okay. The 3DS one did st still did pretty good. Um, that launched a couple months before the Wii U one. Um, however, to anybody just looking, to anybody where this brochure would actually matter, like, you know, like the people that this brochure basically appeals to, you know, people not in the know, people who would need to pick up this brochure to know every, to learn everything they need to learn about the Wii U. Just look at that. They, it's just like, it automatically, like, it just looks like New Super Mario Brothers Wii. In fact, like, pretty much, like, there's so many times when I'll play New Super Mario Brothers U, and if you put footage of you and Wii side to side, it can be kind of hard to tell which one is which. Um, you know, so it's just like, yeah, that just looks like you're playing the Wii game on the gamepad. And that just kind of reinvigorated the whole, uh, 
controversy of like, you know, is this a is this a brand new console or is this an add-on for the uh, for the Wii? Is this is this controller just something I can hook up to my Wii and play Wii games on that screen? And it's just like. Like that's that's the one thing like new Super Mario Bros. U launching with that in concept not horrible But uh, but then when you get down to it when you when you kind of analyze more and more about it And you look at it like oh that was one of the main games they were advertising with the Wii U Yeah, of course everybody thought it was a, it was an add-on because that looks like the exact same game as the Wii one Lisa's brochure is kind of cool uh, Look at that Ah how you will play next. Uh, there's not much of a... <laughs> I don't really think there's a... There's a whole lot of, to analyze here. Like, like you think this would be like a clever... A clever, uh... Way of, of telling the Wii U story. Just like, oh, yeah. It's just like, oh, now I get it. Like, no, it's not really that. It's just kind of a interesting thing that's kind of the one thing the wii u never had that it never had an interesting story to tell like this this brochure concept of like the transparent first page and then unfolding it like that's kind of cool but it's just like when you don't have when you don't have an interesting reason for that to exist it just kind of feels like what's the point of that <laughs> like it's just like you know eh. on the back up oh, look at that the nintendo logo has the exact same treatment now we're on to something how you will play next? That was like the original slogan, the original, uh, the original ad campaign for the Wii U had everybody in boxes. Again, like it's just like you look, you, like what I'm, what I'm trying to convey here is you look at like the original Wii campaign of the two guys going house to house and showing them the Wii remote and the Wii system and just showing them how much fun it is to play in the family. Yeah, it's weird. But there's more depth to that commercial. It makes more sense. Like, in the Wii U commercial, everybody's just in boxes. Everybody's just in boxes. Like, what's the point of that? Is that supposed to mean... Like, it's like, okay, like, oh man, this this page is transparent. What's the point of that? Like, at least with the Wii commercial, that has more depth. That kind of shows it just like, oh, going place to place. That shows it just like, oh, wow, how revolutionary the Wii is. Like, you have to literally... You have to send people out to to do the good deed of telling people exactly how amazing the Wii system was. With the Wii U, everybody was just in boxes. <laughs> okay. Um, but that was the slogan. That was like, I mean, like, yeah, it's a fine slogan, but it's just like, I think it's the one everybody thought of <laughs> when they when they heard of the Wii U. It really wasn't that, uh, it was really playing off of uh, the uh, Wii would like to play and how you will play next. Um, so moving on here. Uh, oh, these are just, uh, these are just some quotes. It's an interesting graphic design here showing off uh, elements of the, uh, console and gamepad. It's the console that was single-handedly changed the way people play games for years to come. Eh, yeah, I mean, like, there's some elements. I think the, I think asymmetrical multiplayer, you know, like, with the dual screen things... I mean, that kind of, you know, that obviously lives on in other ways, like online multiplayer and whatnot. Um, and that, well, that wasn't necessarily a thing that the Wii U pioneered, but it more so kind of made a bit more popular and made a bit more mainstream in terms of just getting more eyes on it. Uh, the Wii U features more horsepower, more connectivity, and one snazzy hook. This hook, uh, a tablet controller that can stream content from the system. Eh, well, that's not really much of an opinion. <laughs> that's just something Nintendo should convey themselves. Instead, they had the Huffington Post uh, say that for them. The Wii U is, an, is unbelievable! Oh my god! Who looked at the system and just was just awestruck? <laughs> uh, the Wii U is unbelievable, and unlike the, the original, it has a gamepad. With a t it's interesting that Nintendo would keep in kind of like, because like gamepad is not supposed to be written like that. It's supposed to be capitalized and the two words are supposed to be together and the P is supposed to be capitalized. Um, in fact, it's right there. That's how it's supposed to be written, but they kept it there. Uh, I mean, it's a quote, but still. Um, with a touchscreen and a camera. God forbid you don't mention the camera. 
Uh, the Wii U is a system for the whole family, which is kind of Nintendo's. That was that was their main thing they wanted to wanted to push with the Wii U. Um, they originally wanted it to be kind of like, oh, it's for everybody, not just the whole family, because they wanted to push how, you know, you had games like Zombie U, and you could play Call of Duty, and Assassin's Creed, and Batman, and, you know, games for more mature audiences, or teenagers, um, you know, it's kind of like the all-in-one system, you don't, you don't have to buy a 360 and a Wii, you can just get the Wii U, um, but then they later just shifted over to like, yeah, it's just for the family, uh, Wii U is not only home to innovative new playstyles for families, but epic core experiences that rival the grandest, most ambitious endeavors available elsewhere. Um, eh. <laughs> epic core experiences at launch that rival? That's, I mean, I love, I mean, I got the Wii, the Wii U isn't my favorite console. Um, I love everything it is and isn't like I, I love this mess of a system um so i i'll be the first to defend and criticize it um at launch there was not a lot of like okay if you want to say uh, epic core experiences that rival um others uh, like i don't know about la at launch there i mean like later down the line you know you had bayonetta 2 devil's third that's that's all I have to say. I mean, at least with Bayonetta 2, you can make that argument. Um, Hyrule Warriors, mm, may, I mean, Hyrule Warriors was cool, but the original was just basically like, yeah, it's a Warriors game with a Zelda skin. Um, so it's not like it's not like an experience you can't get anywhere else. Um, pretty much all the core experiences at launch were just third-party games you could get anywhere else. And Zombie U, which some people loved, some people didn't. You know, it was kind of a mixed bag. So, it's a bit interesting. Uh, why Wii U? <laughs> why? Alright, what is Wii U? That is a nice looking render. Why didn't they use that more often? Look at that. That looks good. That makes the Wii U look really classy. Wii U is the revolutionary new system from Nintendo, featuring high-definition graphics, the innovative Wii U gamepad controller, and a vast collection of incredible games that are only on the Wii U system. Again, at the time, in terms of games that are only on the Wii U, slim pickings there. It was like, y you had a couple. <laughs> you had a handful. What is the Wii U gamepad? The Wii U gamepad is a gaming revolution that lets you game in a new way. And it is exclusive to the Wii U system. <sighs> See, they were trying. They were trying really hard, but it's just like, th just that wording makes it makes the Wii U system feel like an upgrade or just like kind of like a uh, a step you know kind of like kind of like the DSI uh to the DS Lite you know like oh man you know you can you can replace the Wii U gamepad with with that like the Nintendo DSI camera is a gaming revolution that lets you game in a new way and it is exclusive to the Nintendo DSI system you see like it's just like it's the controller don't <laughs> like it's just like it, the word the, the way they worded it is just so bizarre overall um it felt like they were having a really hard time conveying um exactly what this system is I don't it wasn't it wasn't impossible to convey it's just the marketing at the time was just not great um, except that render does look quite good. The picture of the uh, of the Wara Wara Plaza, which is the new system. Uh, yeah, so this kind of shows off what you can do with the Wii U gamepad. Compete from a different perspective. Showing Mario Chase from Nintendo Land um, it was one of uh, my friends and I's uh, favorite games to play back in the day. Um, yeah, so asymmetrical multiplayer. Help or hinder in boost mode. <laughs> Again, it's interesting that they uh, that they uh, give these two games descriptions that you can kind of you, you can kind of attribute you, you can kind of like take these descriptions and use on a lot of other games that use the Wii U gamepad. Like, oh, compete from a different perspective. Well, you can use that perspective with like like uh, like Call of Duty Black Ops 2 that had asymmetrical multiplayer. Um, and Zombie U, 
scan the landscape. You can use that example like, oh, you know, like, oh, map screens. You know, lots of Wii U games have map screens. Helper hinder in boost mode. That's exclusive to New Super Mario Bros. U. It is interesting. Okay, let's see. HD graphics. All right, Nintendo. This is the stupidest comparison you could possibly make. We use the only way to play Nintendo games in stunning high definition. Yeah, I couldn't imagine playing that game in anything but HD. Using the included HDMI cable to connect the Wii U system to the TV, players will enjoy vibrant HD graphics. Experience up to full 1080p HD for the first time ever on a Nintendo gaming system. Uh, if that doesn't convey the problem with uh, New Super Mario Bros. U being kind of like the, uh, the go-to title on Wii U at launch, I don't know what does. Off TV Play, Wii U lets you play games while watching TV. Uh, that was always kind of a nice feature. I think the problem is uh, it wasn't a system-wide feature. It was basically just if the game supported it or if the game developers wanted to do something with it. Like, yeah, the, um, you know, the, I, I, that, that's what was nice about the Wii U was that, you know, you did, you know, like, if you wanted to do something cool with the Wii U gamepad, you could. Um, but I think the problem is, you know, like, advertising off-TV play as a feature when not all games support it, is just kind of like the problem with it, you know? It's just like, what if you wanted to do off-TV play, but all you had was Nintendo Land? Like, you can kind of do off-TV play with some games in there, but the relationship between the TV and the gamepad is what makes that game unique and is required in various games. So, like, I, I think that was, like, one of the main problems. Like, with the Nintendo Switch, 99.9% .9 of games you can play in handheld and you can play on the TV. And that's, like, boom. That's a feature. Off-TV Play is, like, a semi-feature. It's a feature of games. Uh, certain games. It's, it's, it's a... It, it's kind of, like, a weird... It, it just kind of shows how... Um, I don't know. Just unfocused? It just kind of feels like, yeah, with, with a lot of the Wii U, they were just a little unfocused with, like, what the goal of this was. They were trying to do too much, but they ended up not doing enough. Uh, don't want to play on the big TV screen? Continue to play spe specially designed Wii U games using just the Wii U gamepad controller. I don't know if I'd consider that specially designed. That's more so just doing the bare minimum <laughs> is having your game on the gamepad. Um, or multitask and play games on the gamepad while also watching TV. Sure. There it is, Miiverse. We made it to the Miiverse page, everybody. Who else has made it to the Miiverse page on the Wii U brochure? Share, express yourself, and connect with the Nintendo community. Miiverse is a brand new online gaming community that is built directly into the Wii U console. You can share experiences, discuss gameplay, and uncover secrets from gamers all around the world. Plus, you can learn what the Nintendo community is buzzing about. Alright, so my thing about Miiverse is that, like, I like the concept of it. I'm a little bummed out that we don't really have a similar experience on the Switch. Um, of course, it makes sense, because it's just, like... When you get down to it, with the Switch, you can share, like, screenshots or thoughts to Twitter about games you're playing. Um, Twitter and Facebook. I think Facebook. Yeah, it's definitely Facebook and Twitter. Um, and that's way better for Nintendo because it's just, like, literally, like, if you share something to Twitter, that means the entire world gets to see what you're playing on Nintendo Switch. It's basically free advertising. If you share something to Miiverse, only other Wii U owners and eventually 3DS owners because they brought Miiverse to 3DS can view what you're viewing. I mean, to can view what you're posting. And they had Miiverse on PCs and smartphones. You could access the, uh, the, the app or the website. Um, but why would you do that if you weren't a Wii U or 3DS user? You know, that's, that's kind of the problem. So it makes a lot more sense doing what they're doing right now. Uh, I think it would be cool if they did something where you could, uh, you know, you could filter. You, you could go on the Switch and you could be like, oh, I just want to see what Nintendo Switch users are posting. And it'll scour through Twitter and it'll find tweets or pictures that were tweeted with, like, the tag Nintendo Switch share. Because, like, you can see on Twitter, like, what was, what was posted with the Nintendo Switch. If you click on the tweet and it'll say, oh, posted from a Nintendo Switch or something like that. It would be cool if they could filter through those and they could just show you like, oh, what are users saying about this game or whatever. Um, and, <laughs> you know, like, I, I get it. 
Um, I get how they're doing it now. It makes a lot more sense. And when I was younger, like back in 2013, uh, and I was more of a Nintendo fanboy, uh, I was, uh, you know, more of a Nintendo fanboy. Oh my God, you know, like how could I be more of a Nintendo fanboy, uh, you know, than now? I own two of these, but I remember uh, saying how, like when the PS4 was announced, I remember saying how it was stupid because why would my Facebook friends want to see what I'm what I'm doing in a PS4 game, um, you know, on Meverse I can share stuff to Meverse, and uh, and immediately I have way more people that will just care about what I'm posting because like I'm like why why would I post about like New Super Mario Brothers U on Twitter when I could do it on Meverse where like people on Meverse that literally care what I'm saying about New Super Mario Brothers U because they're on Meverse, um, I don't know. Uh, but obviously like the way Sony was doing it with the PS4 was the way to go. It makes a lot more sense um, So, you know, I get it, but uh, Meverse was a neat little idea um, I kind of wish they they had kind of an alternative on the switch There's a few things. I wish they had an alternative on the switch that were on the uh, on the 3ds and Wii U But uh, you know, I get it um, but in select games, you can even access Miiverse features directly within the game. Type messages, attach screenshots, or use the gamepad and stylus to create a handwritten message or drawing while in the game. Uh, so yeah, the, you know, you could do all that kind of stuff. That was always, that was always okay. I, I, I enjoyed that. It was always kind of a nice little chuckle fest when you saw something stupid. Um, you know, specifically in like the Smash Brothers Miiverse stage, uh, Mario U, Mario 3D World. Um, uh, Wind Waker HD had a cool, uh, just evolution of the Tingle Tuner, but the, they, they didn't bring back the regular Tingle Tuner, because in the Tingle, with the Tingle Tuner in the original Wind Waker, you would just, um, you would connect a Game Boy Advance to the GameCube. With the Wii U version, uh, with Wind Waker HD, it was basically, uh, it was basically Miiverse. It was just like, oh, you'd find bottles washed ashore. Which was a cool, which was a cool way to tie Miiverse into uh, Wind Waker there. The Nintendo eShop. So this is how I figured out this was from March or the springtime, because uh, they're talking. Well, first off, they're talking about Lego City Undercover, and uh, you know, Game and Wario is labeled as coming soon. And that was like a June game. Lego City Undercover, and I believe the Cave, and Toki Tori too. These all were like you know, quarter to uh, 2013 titles. Download games from new releases to classic favorites, free demos, and more. Nintendo Wii Shop on the Wii U system is your one-stop destination for a wide variety of downloadable games and entertainment. Buy games made by independent studios, play free demos, or buy your favorite games like new Super Mario Brothers U. So, buy, so you can buy indie games, you can play demos, or you can buy games you already like, like New Super Mario Brothers U. Why don't you buy your favorite game? Why don't you, why don't you buy a game that you haven't played yet? <laughs> why don't you be buying your favorite game, like New Super Mario Brothers U? Uh, I have Runner 2 there. That's a cool game. Uh, yeah, the Wii U, uh, the Nintendo Wii Shop was always, was, was pretty good on Wii U. Had some good music. They changed up the music a lot, which was cool. Um, but uh, they did not have Virtual Console at launch, which was a big issue. You could play Virtual Console games on the Wii U, but you had to enter Wii mode, and no being alive wants to enter Wii mode. But in January, they announced uh, their plans for the Virtual Console service on Wii U. And it was always pretty lackluster. They didn't really get that far with it. They did a few cool things, but um, it just didn't feel like the all-in-one service that uh, that I wanted it to be. I wanted the Wii U to be kind of like my go-to Nintendo platform, and they never did GameCube games, and they did N64 and Game Boy, uh, game, uh, no, not, no, they did Game Boy Advance games in like 2014. I'm thinking like N64 and DS games. They did those way too late to the point that it's just like, I, like, I, I kind of, I, I stopped caring a bit um, when they uh, when they actually got those out there. Um, but, you know, they at least, they at least, uh, started NES and SNES, uh, in, uh, 2013. Uh, Virtual Console officially launched, I mean, it says available this summer, which is more so like, uh, I believe it was like April when Virtual Console officially launched. 
Um, but uh, they did a couple of like test runs because it was like the Famicom's 30th anniversary. So they did like a new virtual console game available for 30 cents, one month only for like nine months out of that year. I'm a little bummed that they discontinued that really quickly. Um, they had a lot of cool ones. Like they had Super Metroid available for 30 cents. They had Punch-Out available. I think Punch-Out. I think Punch-Out was 30 cents. But then they would like, they put Yoshi on there. Just like, eh. They had F-Zero, F-Zero was 30 cents. I think Donkey Kong was as well. Virtual console catalog gives you access to classic games from the NES, Super NES, and Game Boy Advance system. So they knew they were doing Game Boy Advance around this time, but it took them until like January, 2014. Uh, to fully announce Game Boy Advance games that were coming to the Wii U. Uh, because that first year, they just did uh, NES and SNES, which was kind of lame. Uh, you know, I, 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 I love NES and SNES games, but they just aren't as interesting as the other Nintendo systems because they've re-released those games so many times. Even disregarding Virtual Console, they've re-released NES and SNES games so many times on like Game Boy Advance, and they had, you know, obviously the Virtual Console releases. Even now, you know, like they're, they're doing re-releases of like Super Mario Brothers via the uh, Special Edition Game & Watch system. Um, you know, and like with stuff like Mario 35 and whatnot, you know, those are different ways to play. But at the end of the day, like we've played NES and SNES games so many times that it's just cooler to see Game Boy Advance games or GameCube games uh, get re-released or even just regular Game Boy games. Like I, I, I think it's really fun to see regular original Game Boy games get re-released because they don't get re-released that much. They only got re-released on like the, uh, the 3DS Virtual Console and we haven't really seen them in many other instances, so that I, I like that. But uh, SNES games looked really good on Wii U. Uh, NES games uh, didn't look too hot. Uh, I don't even know if that's like, that's probably not a good representation of how NES games looked on Wii U. Cause that, these look too crisp. <laughs> they didn't look this good. They looked, uh, they looked really dark and washed out and kind of blurry. They weren't that great, but SNES games looked great. I loved how they looked on Wii U. Wii U chat, I still have yet to experience this and I should soon before they inevitably take it offline. I desperately need to do Wii U chat. Wii U chat connects living rooms through your TV. So this was kind of when they were just, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft all kind of took notes from, you know, like, you know, what was popular in tech at the time. And they would kind of like take that kind of stuff and apply it to their game consoles and see what's stuck. Um, and you know, video calling was one of them and Microsoft tried it and Sony tried it a couple times. Um, and it eventually died out. <laughs> Nobody really cares about this anymore. Um, which is just like, you think it would be like a really solid feature. Um, and it was, but it's just like, uh, you know, this just died out. I think more than uh, people kind of expected it to. Uh, when using Wii U chat, you can enjoy live video conversation with friends and family who also have a Wii U console from anywhere in the world using only your Wii U and TV screen. All you need is an internet broadband connection. So I remember, yeah, you could draw on the image. The, yeah, um, in addition, you can add a creative and personal touch to your conversation by adding hand-drawn pictures or written text. Um, so at the very least, um, I think I think like a, a recent FaceTime update <laughs> does this. So Nintendo was ahead of the curve with that one. Nintendo TV, I think I tried this for a second, but uh, I didn't get a chance to fully experience the, the uh, core power of. But Nintendo TV was kind of an interesting concept. Um, it said, find, watch, and engage with TV, sports, and more uh, via Nintendo TV. Uh, Nintendo TV is a free integrated service that combines uh, what you watch and how you watch into one seamless second screen experience on the Wii U gamepad. Users can search for programs across their current cable, satellite, and video on-demand services all from one place. Um, and apparently, uh, all they had were, uh, Hulu and Amazon. I believe they'd had Netflix, but they're only advertising Hulu and Amazon here as in like, you know, that's, that's what was supported. I think Netflix, I, I, 100% Netflix was there. I think it came later, but uh, Nintendo TV was a cool idea because at the time uh, it was like kind of a way to bring all that together where you were like, oh, I want to watch this specific TV show or movie. And you could just search via Nintendo TV 
and just get it all there. Um, and just see like, oh, this is on Hulu, this is on Amazon, this is on Netflix. Uh, I have a Roku TV, um, which is just like a smart TV with Roku, with the Roku's uh, like user interface built in, and I love it. I know those TVs are kind of cheap, um, but I like the Roku user interface. It's super good. And uh, they have a search bar there where I can just look up I can just look up a movie and it'll tell me like what apps it's on and it's super convenient it's super convenient and Nintendo TV was kind of a pioneer in that in that style I guess um, it was really interesting um, of course like it was a little too clunky because uh, you know you, you it was kind of it was kind of based off of having your Wii U gamepad be the center of your living room and if and if you weren't really interested in the Wii U gamepad being the center of your living room then you know it's it's not really worthwhile for you I think most people like I, I, I think the problem is like most people didn't really find like just watching TV sports and whatever to be a, 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 um, an experience they wanted more from you know you were watching TV because you wanted to sit back and relax and you just wanted to be entertained I think people were just like, I don't want a, an integrated second screen experience. Uh, you know, like the, you know, the people that were watching TV and sports just wanted to kick back and watch TV and sports. Um, and it, it just, you know, it, and this got discontinued like only a couple of years into the Wii U system. They discontinued Wii, uh, I mean, Nintendo TV, probably like, oof. it was before the Wii U was officially like kind of before the Wii U officially dropped dead, um, you know, it was still, it was still kicking. Um, so they, they dropped it pretty quickly, which is weird because like, I didn't, I wouldn't think this is like a service that they would specifically have to discontinue. Um, but I guess it was, I guess you had to kind of like, they, they consistently updated it. I guess Nintendo on their back end had to do a lot of work. Um, and they just weren't seeing enough people, uh, people use it. But uh, I will say, out of all the TV features, I love the TV remote functionality of the of the Wii U gamepad because it had an IR blaster. You click that TV remote button, and then you could uh, you could uh, you know uh, turn on your TV and adjust the volume and stuff like that. And if I couldn't find my TV remote, you damn well know I could find my Wii U gamepad. That thing was literally bigger than my house. And we street you. Uh, an immersive experience that will make you feel like you're actually there. Eh. So this was basically just using like the Street View uh, feature of Google Maps and uh, just let you, you know, hold up your Wii U gamepad and just like move it around and be like, oh man, I'm using the gyroscope and I can kind of view from like a, a, a first person perspective. Uh, you know, I, I found Google Earth and Google Maps to be absolutely incredible in like 2007. I, I was looking up all kinds of addresses. I was looking up like, oh man, what's this like Hollywood studio or something? Oh, I'll look that up. Oh man, there it is. There it is. And then like, oh man, what about this? What about my house? Oh, there it is. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, but then after a while, you just start to want to use, you just kind of want to use Google Maps to use Google Maps. And, uh, you know, this was kind of like, this was a cute little thing, but, uh, you know, it was, it, it was kind of a weird one to just kind of like make a big, big stink about in your brochure before you even talk about any major games. And this was a downloadable feature or this was, this was, this was a downloadable app. This wasn't even like baked into the system. Uh, with we with we Street View powered by Google, you can view a 360-degree Google Maps Street View of locations all over the world using the Wii U gamepad controller's motion controls. Jumping to a location is easy; just use the gamepad touchscreen to type in an address or location and start exploring. Uh, they did another thing; they had like a panorama view experience, and I don't—they're not going to talk about it, aren't they? Um, they had a panorama view experience. Uh, and it was kind of doing a similar thing, um, except this didn't use, it didn't use like, you know, Google Maps. It, it specifically, you know, Wii Panorama View um, was, or Wii U Panorama View. It was, I forget what it, specifically what it was called there. But um, it was, it was something where like, they had specific videos, uh, panoramic videos that they, that they created that you could like just view around with the Wii U gamepad. Um, but you had to buy them, and at least with this, this was free, I think, hopefully. 
Uh, it was, I think it was definitely free. The internet browser. This was a wonderful feature of the Wii U. The internet browser in 2012 was really good. Um, it played, it played videos really well. And, uh, you know, you could hide what you were, what you were searching up on the TV and then bam, you could show it off when you were ready. It was really good. Um, enjoy the internet with a unique two screen experience. The internet browser lets you surf the web anytime on your TV using the Wii U gamepad. Simple controls let you share the browsing experience with everyone in the room on the TV or keep the browsing private on the gamepad while still watching TV. Browse the internet even in the middle of gameplay. Access the internet browser while in the middle of a game simply by hitting the home button, pause the game at any time, and look up info, strategy, and hints all without leaving the game. So, okay. Um, well, basically, barely any game consoles have a web browser at this point. For good reason. I mean, like, I think, I think a lot of, uh, you know, this was in the era when, like, you can see with the Wii U, like, Nintendo was trying to make this thing, like, the all-in-one ultimate, the ultimate device, you know, like, oh, you can video chat on it, and you can do all your TV stuff, and you can do Google Maps, you can, you can browse the internet. This is when everybody was trying to be the all-in-one device, and I think by this point, many companies are starting to realize that it's better to have a device that, that focuses on one specific thing. You can see that with Nintendo with the Switch. Like, when it launched, it was literally just a game platform, and right now, it's still just a game platform. There's barely anything else you can do on it. You have, like, a couple of streaming apps, but it's very... It's obviously not a focus at all. You know, and you're seeing that with, like, the PS5. The PS5 didn't launch with an internet browser, because it's literally like, wh why would I... Why would I do that on my PS5 when I could just, you know, whip out my phone um, during during gameplay to search up something really quickly? You know, I can just pause the game and just whip out my phone instead of uh, hitting home on the PS5 and uh, going up to the web browser and then doing that and then closing out of that and going back into the game. Obviously, I think it's, you know, it's obviously a bit ignorant to assume that everybody has a, a smartphone or a tablet on them at all times. But uh, I think, you know, the people that would want to be able to do this kind of stuff, they, they already have devices in their home that allows them to do this kind of stuff. So, you know, that, this is definitely has, uh, has definitely faded away. But at the time, the internet browser was really good on Wii U. It, it had the best internet browser of any console. I'll stand by that. Um, and then we go on to backwards compatibility. Uh, most Wii games and accessories are playable on the Wii U system. I don't know of any Wii game that is not compatible on the Wii U. Um, I'm pretty sure all of them are. It just, uh, it just, you know, some, some, um, well, technically speaking, uh, like, there are some games that used the GameCube, uh, GameCube ports. Uh, like the, the Dance Dance Revolution games, you know, you'd have to plug in, uh, the mats. Uh, to the GameCube ports. And then there's also that Cyberbite game, uh, where it was a game that had an accessory that was a bike, and you plug that into the GameCube port. Um, the thing is, those games are still compatible. Like, you can plug them in. Dance Dance Revolution, you can still play with, like, a weird mode on its side. Just who wants to do that? Um, and Cyberbike, I don't think that's playable at all. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think those are the only things that wouldn't be compatible. Um, but they're showing, let's see, showing Wii Sports Resort, Brawl, and, uh, Mario Galaxy. So I'm gonna bring something up that I think I'm the only person that has, uh, brought this up, but, uh, this, uh, makes me realize this is an issue. Uh, the Mario 3D All-Stars box art. On the back, they show the box, the boxes for the three games included, Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy. And Galaxy is the only one that has like the outer, <laughs> the the plastic case shown, which is what they do here. You know, you have the Wii plastic case. It's shown here. Uh, Sunshine is just the box art. They don't have like a black plastic case shown. You know, like like how the GameCube game. You know, it doesn't show like the black plastic case. It just shows the box art. But Galaxy is the uh, has the plastic case, and that annoyed me. Um, but that's probably because like. You know, as you can see, like, probably in Nintendo's archives of, like, promotional materials, they have just, like, PNGs of these these box arts with the Wii, with the Wii plastic case template, as you can see. Um, but yeah, uh, Wii Remote Plus, Nunchuck, Classic Controller Pro, Wii Balance Board. Still have some Wii games that you love playing? Wii U is compatible with most Wii games and accessories. You're repeating yourself. 
so you won't have to restart your video game library. Um, favorites like Wii Sports, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Smash Bros. Brawl are all playable on the Wii U system, alongside your favorite games, like New Super Mario Bros. U, which you haven't bought yet. So buy your favorite games, like New Super Mario Bros. U, on the Nintendo Wii Shop. So here we go over to the uh, the big old uh, the big old full page spreads of the uh, the games available. Uh, it is it does look nice. I'll give them that. I like how it looks. Uh, we have New Super Mario Bros. U. I don't care about this game. It's not that great. Like I said, um, I, I I would rather play any of the other new Super Mario Brothers games. Um, personally, like I just feel like I just feel like they all have more more going on that that's interesting. Um, you know, better level designs. New Super Mario Brothers U. The levels just they, they're just too long, and there's nothing interesting about them. Like eh, like I just eh. it's a fine game. Like it 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 works. It does the job. It gives you a 2D Mario experience. But, eh. <laughs> uh, as a launch title, it was fine because it gave you something to play. But Nintendo Land was definitely a lot better. You have so much more going on here. Um, there's so much fun in Nintendo Land. Even like the bad games in Nintendo Land still have some merit to them. You know, I think they they still have some some stuff to them. These are interesting two games to show next. <laughs> Uh, Lego Scene and Recover. Uh, I didn't get super into this one. I know some people did. I don't know. The load times were just abysmal in this game. They went on for too long. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, Lego games, you know, I, I'm not... I don't dislike, but, uh, you know, they're... they're. I don't know. They just don't hold my attention that much. Um, but Need for Speed Most Wanted You, uh, this is like the definitive console version. I think my main problem with it was that the fact that the Wii U, uh, Wii U gamepad doesn't have analog triggers... Which, uh, which made, you know, a, a kind of a realistic racing game, or, you know, Need for Speed is a little more arcadey, but um, kind of a game like this. Uh, makes a game like this feel a little weird, I guess. But, uh, you know, it looks the best on Wii U. It's interesting that they called it Most Wanted U. Uh, you know, that they would change the name of it uh, when this was, I believe this was the last EA game on the Wii U. This was the last game that they put on there. Um, and they went to all the trouble of renaming, of putting a, putting a U at the end of the title. Here we go to Wonderful 101. This was before they had the official logo. Uh, you know, I like Wonderful 101. It's all right. Um, I remember, like, I, I couldn't get a hold of it. It was, um, it was just really really weird at first it doesn't make a great first impression the problem is they put out a demo of it in like august or so um and the demo wasn't good it had a bad demo um like i i think i along with many other people started playing it and just got kind of confused it has a very unique control scheme and um it just got really confused and kind of just dropped interest, like, didn't have any interest in it. I played it again recently on Wii U. This was, like, as in recently, as in, like, probably, like, a year or two ago. And I liked it a lot more. It was literally like, oh, I get it now. Like, I actually put the disc in and I tried it out from there. And I liked it. Um, so, like, it, it does, um, you know, it does require a bit more... It requires a bit... A, a bit of like uh just like you really you, d you do really have to want to play it um you know it's it may not immediately click but uh it's a good game um but uh pikmin 3 is a little more my speed i love pikmin 3 it's a great game and it took a billion years to come out but it's coming in 2013 exclusively for wii u thank god it's such it's such a wonderful game it's so wonderful uh we fit you this took a while to come out too. This this came out in November of 2013, and it was free um, for two weeks. You had two week. You could download it and play it for two weeks, and then afterwards, if you wanted to keep, or it might have been a month. I think you you got it for a month. You could play it for a month for free, but then afterwards, if you wanted to keep playing it, you had to buy the uh, Wii Fit U pedometer, um, you know, in stores for like 20 bucks to keep playing it. Um, I think the problem is nobody did that. I think people who wanted to play it just tried it out. They got their fill out of it out of, for a month, and then they just moved on. Um, and this is like one of the only Nintendo published Wii U games I still haven't really played. 
Um, so I'll probably get on that because Wii Fit U is probably the best Wii series game on Wii U. I wasn't a big Wii Party U guy. I tried Wii Party U. I it didn't really click with me. Wii Sports Club was okay. But it's just a remake of Wii Sports. And honestly speaking, I think I definitely preferred Wii Sports, like the original Wii Sports. Um, like, I just got so used to the, like, more limited motion controls that when you add Motion Plus, uh, it just feels off to me. Uh, but I don't know. I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it more of a try. Um, but as I was saying, the Wii U had pretty decent third-party support in the, uh, in the uh, early first year. Um, and this is evidence of that. Look, you got Injustice Gods Among Us, available April 16th. I remember, it was weird, because, like, I think, like, this, the Wii U version of this game was, like, basically, like, not talked about until launch. Like, nobody said anything about it. Like, the developers and publishers didn't do any, like, they didn't say anything about it. It just happened. Um, but I think the Wii U version was okay. Um, but I think much like other third-party games on Wii U, it was missing, it was missing features or DLC. It, it was missing a, a few things, I do know that. Um, which I think was like a major problem, was like, yeah, you are getting these games on Wii U, but you're getting kind of watered-down versions of them, you know? They're, they're pretty much, you know, they were there, you know? If you played Injustice on Wii U, you played Injustice. Um, the same with The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Uh, this was at like the height of that show. Um, I remember watching this show on, like, Netflix back then in 2013, and I was like, oh man, this is, this is great. And then I stopped caring, like, two, three seasons in. <laughs> but this came out around the time I was kind of watching it, um, so I was interested in this, I was interested in this game, and I played it on Wii U about a year or two ago. It's not great. It's like, it, it's, it's definitely like, by 2013, the, like, the, you, you didn't get a ton of the, uh, you, you didn't get a ton of, you know, licensed games. And by licensed game standards, it was okay. Like, it, it definitely, I, I think if you were a big fan of The Walking Dead, which I'm not right now, I wasn't even, like, a huge fan back then. I just, it was just, like, something that I was just like, oh, I'll watch that on Netflix in 2013. And I was like, yeah, that was, that was you know, it kind of kept, kept my attention. Um for a while um but if you're if you were a big fan and you picked this up you were probably like yeah that's pretty good you know you had the you know you had uh you had the uh i think some of the actors reprised their roles um and the concept was pretty cool like it was just like yeah you know like it is a survival first person shooter kind of thing and you know you have to kind of like get a bunch of materials to survive and whatnot um it just wasn't that great <laughs> Uh, but so that's why you had to get Disney Infinity instead. Instead, um, I have not played any real Toys to Life games outside of Amiibo-related junk. Um, so I have nothing really. I mean, like from what I've seen, Disney Infinity was pretty high quality. Um, most of the Toys to Life games were honestly, like pretty much all of them, like Lego Dimensions, Skylanders, Disney Infinity. They're all pretty high quality. If anything, I think the Amiibo-related games were the least, <laughs> were the were the lowest quality out of all Toys to Life games. Um, just because, like, Amiibo games, they, they barely had anything, anything for you to do in them. Uh, like, Amiibo Festival, um, yeah, that's pretty much, like, the only, like, major, like, retail game that specifically was, like, oh, like, you need Amiibo for this. Uh, most of the other ones were specifically, um, more based on, like, oh, little extras, little bonuses. Um, but from what I remember seeing, Disney Infinity was pretty high quality. Um, and Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, uh, that was another big March game, that was something else that you could look forward to. Um, I have not played this one, the only Monster Hunter game that I played was Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate on Switch, and, uh, that is an up, up res of a, uh, of a 3DS game. It did not look too hot, but, uh, you know, like, I, I, I it was, it was, I, I kind of got the hold of it at for a second, I guess. Uh, Monster Hunter is notoriously, or at least at the time, was notoriously a bit more, uh, a bit tricky to get into for first timers. Um, so I never really played it, but I tried a little bit of Generations Ultimate. I think I'll give uh, Monster Hunter Rise on Switch more of a try. And I'll definitely try this out because I do want to go through my entire like Wii U library um, and just get, just, just become the strongest Wii U owner of all time. Uh, then we have Assassin's Creed 3, 
um, which was a launch title, and Zombie U, which was another launch title. That was kind of the core, that was the big core title for everybody. If you wanted an M-rated game, uh, and you didn't really want Sing Party, then you could get Zombie U. Which, uh, I didn't play a ton of Zombie U, but it didn't really grab me. Uh, I had a lot of cool, really cool, uh, concepts, but, uh, I don't know, it was, I, I got lost in it, and I just gave up, <laughs> like an hour in. Uh, also available, you have Batman Arkham City Armored Edition, uh, which was kind of like, that was like one of the first third-party games revealed for Wii U, I remember in like 2011, Warner Brothers like, said in a scissor reel, uh, a scissor reel, um, and they said it very smugly, like, Batman Arkham City is gonna be on Wii U. And I think people were like, oh my god! And then, like, a couple seconds later, they were like, well, the system's coming out in 2012, that game's coming out this holiday, so it's coming out a year after the other versions? Okay. Um, Ep Epic Mickey 2, which, uh, was a huge drop in the bucket. I barely know anything about Epic Mickey 2. Um, Epic Mickey has its fans. Um, and the concepts of Epic, uh, Epic Mickey 1, they are pretty cool. Nobody talks about the sequel. The other, the, um, it had like a companion title on 3DS that was based on the, uh, the Castle, uh, uh Castle of Illusion on Sega Genesis. Uh, which was a cool concept to kind of go back to that, uh, that style of game. Um, and that, I know about that one. I barely know anything about this one. Except this one was multi-platform, and it originally wasn't coming to Wii U. It was only coming to Wii 360 and PS3. <laughs> um, but it got announced for Wii U. Uh, Skylanders Giants, Scribble Nuts Unlimited, um, Sing Party, uh, which that is like one of the most worthless Wii U games ever. It's literally a karaoke game, but there's nothing to it. It's just karaoke. Uh, Skylanders Giants is interesting because I think the original Skylanders came out on Wii U only in Japan. So, you know, just in case. Uh, just Dance 4 and Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, which Ninja Gaiden 3 got horrible reviews, uh, reviews, and, um... Versus Edge got better reviews, <laughs> so good for it. Uh, and just, because Nintendo is overcompensating here, a comparison. Up to 1080p HD graphics, off TV play, Miiverse, Nintendo TV, Wii U chat, Wii Street U, browse the internet during gameplay, plays Wii U games, plays Wii games, uses Wii remote controllers and accessories, Netflix slash Hulu Plus, plays games online, plays downloadable games, internet browser, storage. Well, the, the, uh, the stats don't lie. No wonder people didn't buy a Wii U. Nobody likes things with 8 gigabytes of storage. You have a comparison of the two sets you could get. Uh, basically, you had the Deluxe and the Basic. Um, pretty much anybody who uh, wasn't, wasn't a moron went with the Deluxe set. Because for $50 more, you got a $60 game included for free. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you? <laughs> you could sell Nintendo Land for like, at what? Like at the, in 2012, if you didn't want Nintendo Land, you could buy the deluxe set for $350 and sell Nintendo Land to like GameStop for like $50 or like, I don't know, like 40 at the least, probably. Um, and you'd still get all this stuff for like what? Like, you know, $10 more? Or probably, like, less money? Because it's just like, yeah, you sell Nintendo Land, you get literally a 32 gigabyte console compared to an 8 gigabyte console, and you get all these accessories. Like, why wouldn't you? Uh, but, uh, I don't know. I do like the look of the Wii, of the, uh, white Wii U better, just because, uh, the Wii U is annoyingly very glossy. So, uh, I think the white... Having, like, glossy white is better than glossy black, because glossy black just shows off fingerprints and dust. But I got the deluxe set, because uh, you got 32 gigabytes, and you got a charging cradle and gamepad stand, which at that point, like, why include both? <laughs> Literally, the, the charging cradle does everything the gamepad stand does, and it also charges the, it charges the gamepad, so it's just like, what's the point of including that, too? It's just more garbage to throw in the box. I will say, though, the gamepad stand is the best smartphone slash tablet stand I have ever seen in my life. It works so well. Just pop your phone in that, and it is so good. It works so well. Uh, the charging cradle I didn't use like a ton. Well, I don't use a ton now. I don't really use a gamepad stand that much. I'll, I mean, like I use it for like my phone. I have it at my desk up there. 
Uh, like I use I use the gamepad stand a lot for my phone if I'm like watching something and I'll put that on the gamepad stand It works really well uh, But the charging cradle is just like I don't know to just consolidate things Why not just include the charging cradle because you know it works as a gamepad stand you don't need to keep it plugged in uh, So I don't know it's a little weird and it's also like the, the gamepad stand isn't like adjustable or anything You can't like adjust the uh, the angle of the gamepad. So what's the point? <laughs> uh, Wii U console stand uh, not nearly as elegant as the original Wii stand that was like that that silver rectangle uh, That one you had to like prop the feet up and uh, and putting the Wii U uh, up vertically um, Didn't look as good because you know, it's obviously supposed to be laid on its side as you can see by the uh, you know the orientation of the uh, of the uh, of the text um, but I used it a few times when I would reorganize things uh, So, you know, I put the Wii U up like that uh, I think it would just been nicer if the Wii U was completely like squared off, but they needed to do something to make it look slightly different from the Wii and They failed because it looks pretty much identical to the Wii the deluxe digital promotion was a wonderful uh, That was a wonderful little service where it's just like I don't know the more the more stuff you bought on Nintendo Wii shop You just got points back and uh, every now and then I'd like log on to the digital deluxe promotion Website and I'd be like, oh shoot, I got five dollar coupons uh, They basically do the same thing now with like the my Nintendo coins, but I hate my Nintendo. So it's just like eh. uh, You know, I like this better because this wasn't associated with a dog shit service and then for fifty dollars less You could get the basic set With none of that and an eight gigabyte console Why they, they discontinued the basic set in North America. I'm pretty sure they had a couple of different like after after like uh, whatever. It was like September 2013. The deluxe set obviously got uh, discounted to $300. And ever since then, the basic set was kind of like non existent. They had one uh, version of the Wii U that was like in like 2013 or something in holiday, uh, that holiday that was uh, a Skylander set. It was, it was a console. Air might have been in 2014, I'm trying to think. Yeah, 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 2013, 2014, around then, um, they had the uh, a, a basic set Wii U that came with like Skylanders uh, Swap Force and like the game and you know the the portal and some figures and it was a basic set Wii U, but it came with that and Nintendo Land, so it was it was a basic set, but it came with a bunch of garbage, kind of like the deluxe set did. But ever since that, the basic set was pretty much gone from, from stores in North America. Uh, what really annoys me is that Japan got deluxe set versions in white. Like, you could get deluxe Wii U's in white. And in fact, I believe, on the Nintendo online store in North America, they had refurbished Wii U's that were white Wii U's that were deluxe models. They were, they were 32 gigabyte North American Wii U's in white, and the only place you could get them were refurbished on the Nintendo Online Store. And I'm telling you now, those are going to be the rarest damn Wii U's available. Um, alongside the basic set, I'm pretty sure the basic set, um, the basic set's gonna be hard to come by. So uh, I, would, I would very much, you know, if, if you're looking into the Wii U collecting market, you know, if you wanna be like this, uh, definitely keep an eye out for some basic sets, the white models, um, and also potentially North American white Wii U's that are 32 gigabytes because uh, they exist. I know they do. They were on Nintendo online stores, um, but uh, you know, just, just look out for those because I feel like uh, the basic set's not super rare. I mean, they still sold them, but uh, you know, like they're definitely more uncommon than the black we use. But uh, there are, there do exist North American region, white deluxe set we use. Mark my word for it, either that or people are never gonna take me seriously ever again because they don't exist, but they do. I swear they do. Um, now we have frequently asked questions. The longest section in the old brochure. Is the Wii U gamepad a portable or a standalone device? The Wii U gamepad is neither a portable system nor a standalone console, but rather a revolutionary controller for Wii U that allows you to experience gaming in a whole new way, including elements like off-TV play, browsing the internet, and serving as a TV remote. 
Is the Wii U gamepad compatible with the Wii console? No, the Wii U gamepad is exclusively used with Wii U. Do Wii games work on Wii U? Dude, you know, like, what were you what were you reading this whole time? Does Wii U come with or support a second gamepad for multiplayer? At this point, the Wii U gamepad is not sold as a separate item and does not support a second gamepad for multiplayer use. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, they made a big stink about that at E3 20, uh, 2012 when they were like, oh yes, the Wii U can support two gamepads, uh, gamepad controllers. To be fair, I mean, they say at this point, but... I mean, they could at least say, oh, it supports a second gamepad. That just never happened. There's there's absolutely nothing you can do with a second gamepad. Um, in fact, I mean, I do have multiple gamepads now. So, I'm, I'm thinking about potentially syncing them to my, 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 my standard Wii U and just seeing if what would happen if you sync two, two gamepads at once. I'm interested. But, uh, yeah, that was always a bit garbage that you couldn't buy a second gamepad because it was literally like, well, what if yours breaks? Eh, it's more of a, it's more of a bitch to get that repaired. I mean, like, yeah, it, it's better to get that repaired than to have to buy a completely new one. But, like, what if you're like, I just want to get, I, I need a new controller right now. I'm going to go to the store, get a new gamepad. Like, no, you couldn't do that. Like, you couldn't do that if you, if you had to. What is the range of the Wii U gamepad from the Wii U console? Not a lot. Um, for the best experience, the Wii U gamepad should be no more than 24 to 27.5 feet away from the Wii U console. However, this range is affected by obstructions such as walls or other electronic devices. That's fair. I was gonna say, like, I can barely go, like, from one room to another, but of course, walls. Is there an additional fee for creating a Nintendo Network ID? Nintendo Network ID and other Wii U applications such as Miiverse, Wii U Chat, Internet Browser are all free and ready to use right out of the box. Eight years later, what if I would like to expand my usable memory for Wii U? Is Wii U compatible with external storage devices? Many consumers find that either 8GB or 32GB is sufficient for their gaming and downloading needs. Wow, Nintendo just gave a big f you to, <laughs> to anybody who doesn't, uh, who doesn't think 32GB is enough. Uh, however, if you wish to download more content, Wii U works with certain external powered USB storage devices. It does. Uh, I just use a flash drive. It's probably not that safe, but it works. Uh, and then, uh, Wii U, how you will play next. And there it is. That's a fun trip down memory lane. Like I said, the Wii U is my favorite console, um, but it's like my favorite to discuss. It's my favorite to look back on. I just have a lot of memories back then um, of just like being a Nintendo fan around that time. There's something somewhat magical about being a Nintendo fan during a dark time like the Wii U era and just being there for that